Hello, my name is Gabby and welcome back to my channel or if you're new here then welcome to my channel and today's video is going to be my spoiler free review and book series wrap up for Hunting by Stars by Cherie Dimmeline which is the sequel and final book in the Marrow Thieves duology which is two book series completed in what I feel like is a reasonable amount of time and you know it feels good. And it's also an energy that I need and want to keep going because I have way too many series that I've left unfinished for the past couple of years. And today we are going to be talking about one that I started in late 2022. I will have the content warnings for both of these books linked down below in the description and let's go ahead and get into it. The Marrow Thieves takes place in a world where most of humanity has been destroyed by global warming and the indigenous people of North America are being hunted and harvested for their bone marrow, as it contains the key to resolving why the rest of the population is not able to dream. And we follow our main character Frenchie as he and his companions struggle to run and survive with the goal of making it to the north. And we are going to start this video by briefly talking about my thoughts on The Marrow Thieves. This was a book that I basically read in one sitting and it was a really easy book to just get fully invested in. There's a large cast of characters and I felt really attached to all of them. And it also had just incredibly strong found family elements and honestly you don't really need to do much more for me to like a book or really any story. But on top of that the Marrow Thieves also had a really compelling story. It was very apocalypsey with some fantasy elements while also still reflecting real life atrocities and hate. Everything was going super well for a long time however there were a few scenes towards the end of this book that were not my favorite, especially when it came to our main character and the romance, which were two concerns that I took with me going into this sequel, and well... I did start out this book pretty worried because it was going a little bit slow and it did feel kind of basic and I just didn't really love what was going on for about half of it. Frenchie's storyline for example felt very tropey however his chapters quickly became where I wanted to be the most because that's a lot of where the story was happening and progressing and the other point of views just took a little more time with me although less time than Frenchie's because even though his chapters were where I wanted to be they still weren't my favorites in terms of content and I liked what the other point of views were doing better in terms of content. But like I said, things turned around about halfway through and somewhere along the line I fully found myself back into this series. And we will go ahead and start off with Frenchie because I liked him a lot more in this book. Or I should say what I liked about Frenchie in the first book was present more in this one. And the things I didn't like about him weren't there as much. He has a very complex and a very heartbreaking storyline in this book. He doesn't always do the right thing. And you do really see that way on him in this book because he is really struggling with trying to find a way to achieve what he wants to achieve. We also do get a lot of Rose in this book. She's my new favorite and I grew to really love her and her chapters in this story. Her storyline was a lot more apocalypsey, and I think this author created some really compelling concepts and I love the way that everything built up to the ending and tied together in the end. And we also did get some other point of views throughout the story and again everything after roughly the halfway point I found to be really interesting. It did just take me some time to get there with them so they did feel a little bit on the slower side at first. As for my second concern with this book, the romance. And yeah, again, I didn't really need to feel that concerned about it. I will say I do think that I prefer this romance when the two characters involved are separated from one another. There was a brief moment in this book where I was reminded of why I was concerned in the first place, which made me roll my eyes pretty hard, but these two characters deserve to be happy, so I'm happy for them in that sense. And once again, just like book one, my favorite aspect of this story was by far the found family, and this just fully took control over my heart in this book because there were just so many hard breaking and also heartwarming moments and you can just really feel how much love these characters have for each other and I feel like that was really amplified in this book just because of the nature of the story and I felt fully attached to every single person involved in this family and we did get to know some of them more in this book and read their stories which was really nice because it did end up helping me get even more attached to them even though I don't really know how much help this book needed on that front. As for the villains this book has a variety of them and they were all really different from one another and also really showcase just a multitude of twisted and ugly reactions people have had to their current reality and the actions and paths that they took as a result and like I mentioned earlier it felt very real in a lot of ways which is very scary to say the least and there are once again just a lot of things in this book that can easily be found in history and also modern day. Hunting by Stars is a story with a lot of tense moments that I was on the edge of my seat for and rooting for the characters the entire way through and like I said 
that there's a lot of heartbreak and a lot of darkness but also a lot of hope within the story and within these characters and I just ended up feeling so many different emotions by the end of it. And speaking of the ending, I really liked it, especially the final chapter and final scene. There's no third book coming as far as I know, but there easily could have been with the way that this one left off. And although part of me does feel like some things were missing from the ending and like maybe it could have wrapped up better or more cleanly, at the same time I do like the way that it ended and I liked how open that it felt. For just these characters to continue on with their lives even if we don't see it, which is something that I'm growing to like more and more at the end of books. Or maybe I've just gotten lucky with the ones that I've read so far, I don't know, I guess we'll see. Overall, this series has definitely become a favorite of mine, especially within the apocalypse genre. I haven't thought about it too hard, but it actually might be my favorite, and that's all thanks again to the characters and the found family. And those things combined, which is a really compelling concept and storyline made for a good, high-quality reading experience that I am sure that I will be thinking about for a long time. As for my ratings, I gave The Marrow Thieves 4.25 out of 5 stars. I'm also going to be giving Hunting by Stars 4.25 out of 5 stars which makes my overall final rating for this duology 4.25 out of 5 stars. Okay, so that is all that I have for today's video. Thank you all so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell, and answer the question that will be around here if you want to do that, and hopefully I will see you here next time. Bye!